Hi everyone, it's Mike here. Before we get on to my February mission inspiration page, I just want to take this opportunity to say a huge, huge thank you to everybody that has joined the Mission Inspiration Facebook group. Um, as of today, we're around about, well, just under 350 members, which is absolutely phenomenal. I didn't think we'd have as many people wanting to take part as obviously do, which is brilliant, brilliant news. Now, if you haven't seen the Mission Inspiration Facebook group yet, but you've seen the videos and want to take part, then I will put the link just here on the screen, just there, so you can see that. And I'll also put the link to the Facebook group, which is a public group. Anybody can join, providing that they are artsy and crafty. Um, I have had to say no to some people, as in some Russian women looking for husbands. And, um, and take part in the monthly missions. So the monthly mission obviously is up there now for February and this is my take on that page. So without further ado, this is what I've done with mission for February. <laughs> Welcome, Art Agent Specialists. Your mission for February, should you wish to accept it, is as follows. You must create an art journal page or canvas with the following instructions. Step 1. Apply two colours with your fingers. Step 2. Add torn magazine advert fragments. Step 3. Add a thin layer of gesso. Step 4. Add texture paste through a stencil. Step 5. Make marks with a brush or comb. Step 6. Adhere book text shapes. Step 7. Use two rubber stamps containing text. Step 8. Add doodles with a coloured pen. Step 9. Add a quote or phrase like a ransom note. And finally, step 10, create a border with washi tape. Remember, this message will self-destruct in three seconds. Good luck. So we're going to begin with step number one, which is apply two colours with your fingers. I'm using lime yellow and cerulean blue from Reeves. This is an acrylic paint and as you can see I'm working in my black dilutions journal today. So I'm randomly spreading paint around the pages with my fingers. I'm just going to create a kind of border with the lime green. And I'm just going to move it in vertical and horizontal motions. I'm not going to do any diagonals on this page whatsoever. So I'm just going to smear it around the page and then I'm going to bring out my heat gun and before I apply the blue I'm going to make sure that the lime green is completely and utterly dry. Okay, now that, now that that's dry, it's time to bring out the blue and I'm just going to randomly smear some of the blue around the page, but I'm not going to put on as much of the blue as I did of the lime green. And when I'm happy with the blue, I'm just going to bring out my heat gun and give it a real good blast to make sure it's all nice and dry before we move on to step number two. So step number two is to add torn magazine advert fragments. So I've found some magazines and I've gone through and I've cut out rather than tear because I wanted to use small pieces so it was a bit more controlled to actually use a pair of scissors. So I've actually cut out a selection of faces from magazine adverts from about four or five different magazines and I made sure that I had a nice selection of male and female faces. 
and I'm just going to stick those down with the matte medium from Mod Podge. And as you can see, I'm starting to arrange my faces in a kind of triangular pattern, which follows the, the black center to the page. So I'm trying to um, still keep that kind of shape by putting down the, the faces that mirrors the kind of background or the darkness in the background and only putting one or two into the actual colored areas. So I've also cut them out at different sizes, so I wanted some larger ones and some smaller ones. And I'm putting the smaller ones more to the outside of the shape, but I am making sure that I've left enough space on the inside for my main focal image when I'm ready to put that down. And yes, I couldn't resist adding a little fairy creature too. But I did all of my little pieces and now it's time for my main focal image. Now, for this, I have found a large face and what I've done is I've actually cut the contour of a silhouette out of the face. So you can see that the, it looks as though um, it's a side on silhouette face. And I've also cut it so it actually fits the contours of the face too. So when you actually split them, you're actually getting what looks like three faces because the black also forms a silhouette of the face side on two. So step number three is to cover with a thin coat of gesso. Now for this, because I'm using my black dilutions journal, I'm going to use black gesso. So I've just watered some down on my craft mat and I'm just going to paint over all of the images with a very thin layer of black gesso, which is going to knock all of those faces into the background. In hindsight, I think I should have used a larger brush to do this rather than the small detail brush that I've got here. Um, using a smaller brush just means that there was more lines in the gesso. I don't think it's detracted away from the page, but I think a more of a block effect would have been better. Just grabbing a baby wipe and I'm just going to remove some of that gesso away from my main focal point, the face, just to diffuse it a little bit more so it's not quite so stark. So step number four is to add texture paste through a stencil and for this I'm using the Winsor & Newton heavy carvable modelling paste and the stencil that I'm using is the Mini Cubist from TCW, the Crafters Workshop. So for this I'm just randomly going around the edges of the page again creating a little bit of a border on the edges. I'm not bringing the paste too far into the page. I just want to add the texture paste around, primarily just around the outsides. I will put some just on the edges of the faces just to kind of diffuse that a little bit, but I'm only using the smaller part of the stencil. So I'm just gonna grab a baby wipe and wipe off some of the excess paste where I didn't want it. And then I'm gonna give it a blast with the heat tool and then move on to step number five. So step number five is to make marks with a brush or comb. And as I've said before, I don't actually own a comb and the brush that I have got, I didn't want to get paint on it. So I'm going to use this texture comb, which is pretty much the same thing. If you were using a comb, you'd still get the teeth of the comb, the effect, which is the dots. So this is actually a scraper for, I think it's cake making. And I picked this up from a cake decorating shop. Step number six is to adhere book 
text shapes. Now I've cut out some uniform square sizes of book text and I'm going to place these with the Mod Podge around the areas where I didn't put any of the faces. Now I'm not going to add very many of these, maybe six or seven because I want to doodle on top of these a bit later on. So I'm not covering over any faces, I'm just adding these in the gaps where I'd left in the faces. And yes, I will be sticking some of these over the top of the texture paste too. And the last piece just down at the bottom and then we will move on to step number seven. Step number seven is to use two rubber stamps containing text and I'm using this Tim Holtz set from Stampers Anonymous that also contains faces which is quite apt and just two quotes that I'm going to just randomly stamp around the page and just fill in some of those areas that I have nothing in at the moment. So I'm just swapping the stamps over and adding in the second one and I'm just going to place that around the page and this time I'm going to start layering that over some of the images and over the texture paste and starting to actually catch a little bit of the outside of my main focal point. But as you can see I have deliberately left the space in between free. Step number eight is to add doodles with a coloured pen. Now I'm using Barn Door from, um, it's a distress pen, and this is a red one which matches or pulls the colour from her lips. And all I'm going to do is just to add some Zen doodles onto the book text squares that I've added to my page. Now this kind of balances the colour because the red um, from her lips doesn't appear anywhere else really. So I'm just adding that as a little bit of extra pop. And for each of the squares, I'm just going to use a different doodle pattern. So everyone will be different. So step number nine is to add a quote or phrase like a ransom note. So I went through all of my magazines and pulled out uh, words that I needed for the quote that I'd found, which was to do with beauty. And all I'm going to do is just adhere those down in the gap in between the two sides of the face. Um, just with Mod Podge and I'm just picking it up and adding the Mod Podge on and then just going over the top. A very quick and simple and easy process. The hard part was finding the words in the first place. So I'm just going to go over the entire of the quote with the Mod Podge to make sure it's all nicely stuck down and then I'm going to bring up the heat gun and give it a good blast to make sure that it is completely and utterly dry before moving on to my final stage. Final step number 10, create a border with washi tape. So I've dragged out a um, roll of washi tape from my stash. Now this is a black border with gold pattern. And I think this fits the page really, really well. So I'm going to just tear small strips and add those to the border of the page. Now the reason I'm not used the full length um, as in just like one long strip to border the page is because I wanted to just break up the pattern a little bit. I didn't want too much of a, 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 a the same repeated pattern. So I'm just using smaller pieces instead. You don't have to, you can use as many different types of washi tape and as, as long strips or small strips as you want to. This is just my personal preference. And of course, when you're using smaller strips, it's easier to take off and reposition if you kind of get it a bit wrong, like I just did there. So onto the final stretch, just a couple more pieces to add, and then we are done and dusted. And now all that is left for me to do is just to sign and date the page and just trim off those little corners and this page is complete so there 
is my February page. I'm just adding a little piece underneath the word beauty there because it's so large. Just kind of brings it all together a bit. And a little piece under the word heart at the bottom. So there you go, all done and dusted. So I'm just gonna sign and date it and I'm gonna call this page done. Well, I hope you've enjoyed my little take on February's challenge. As I said before, if you haven't taken part or you haven't joined the Facebook group and you want to take part and participate with these challenges, then all you have to do is just to pop along to that Mission Inspiration Facebook group page, which I'll put the link there again and in the description area below. And all you have to do is just to request to be added to the group and I will do so. So that's it from me. If you like the video, please remember to give it a thumbs up so YouTube know that you want to see more from me. And if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel already, you can do so by clicking the button at the end of the video. That's all from me. I will see you all again real soon. Bye for now.